Ah, Venice, La Serenissima, the city of masks, everybody's favourite dream destination. The lagoon city built up of over 100 islands and canals. The capital city of Veneto that's shrinking at the rate of up to 2 millimetres per year. But is there anything about this magnificent city we don't know? You'll arrive at Marco Polo Airport, about 8 kilometers from the center. Three choices then to the mainland, the coach, Vaporetto or a private taxi. A private taxi like this will set you back 160 euros as of late 2022. If you want to get straight into it, why not get off at the famous Rialto Bridge and grab a coffee or Aperol Spritz with amazing views over the canal. If you're lucky, you arrive just as Venice is waking up for the day. Our first stop, luggage or no luggage, is Alarco. This Osteria, a Venice institution, is a family-run business serving inexpensive wine and cecchetti. It's all prosciutto and squid here, but if you ask nicely, and I mean incredibly politely, they will make you some incredible vegan options like these. Roasted aubergine with baby basil, pickled cauliflower and mint, and more delicious pickled goodies. And all of the locals love it. Yes, the Vaporetto, Venice's public transport. Venice is an amazing city to walk around, but you do have to take in the incredible views from the water at least once. Plus, a great chance to cool down in the city's peak July temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. That was us going under the famous Ponte dell'Accademia Bridge, past the Dorsodora Sestiere or region, to Piazza San Marco. Surely the best views in Venice come from the top of the Campanile de San Marco, the 99 metre bell tower of St. Mark's Basilica. The former lighthouse is also the tallest building in Venice. Don't worry though, at the entrance is an elevator which gets you to the top in just five seconds where you can see the bell tower. It was from here in 1609 that Galileo first demonstrated his telescope. Once back on dry land, explore Piazza San Marco's famous arcades, which are full of bars and restaurants. Here you can also see St. Mark's Basilica, Doge's Palace and the Clock Tower. visit the 18th century Café Florian, whose previous drinkers include Casanova, Charles Dickens, Lord Byron and Andy Warhol. Do note that if you're arriving during a concert, you'll have to pay six euros per person in addition to the bill. Venice is a true explorer's city. There are over 2,600 of these alleyways, adding up to a distance of around 160 kilometers. Do not try to use a map here, it's impossible. Abandon your Google Maps and simply remember landmarks and shops to recall your way home. When walking, find any excuse for a glass of beer or a coffee. Then people watch in the squares or enjoy some of the buskers.
Many centuries ago, Venetians travelled around the city on the gondola, a long and narrow boat steered by gondoliers. And there's a reason they're all painted black. 500 years ago, families were in competition with who had the fanciest colours or the most gold on their gondola. Things quickly got out of hand, so the doge quickly enforced a law whereby they all had to be painted black. As you can see, the law is still enforced to this day. Think it looks easy? This practice of standing on the boat is called voga alla venita, a difficult art for which you have to pass a proficiency test. You'll also have to belong to a gondolier's guild, go to college, and then undertake 400 hours of training after being sponsored by a current member. You then have to pass a tough final exam. Each boat takes two months to be made by hand. All gondoliers pay for their own boat, which can cost as much as 50,000 euros. It was an expensive ride, but the gondoliers are incredibly knowledgeable and passionate about their city, which made it worth every penny. They can take you anywhere in Venice. We did not go for the upgrade, but our gondolier did take us to Marco Polo's house. If you're lucky, consider staying in a traditional Venetian home. Typical interiors can include long thin windows, a marbled floor, handcrafted wooden furniture, gold frame mirrors and Rosso Verona marble throughout. Perhaps a chandelier too. The entrance is usually down one of Venice's very long and thin alleyways. You'll usually have a grand front door with a stylish knob. The entranceway will be vast and impressive with a staircase taking you upstairs. Perhaps you'll have a balcony overlooking a tiny square, a small terrace, or a living room where you can enjoy a riposo, the northern Italian equivalent of a siesta. After a long lunch, hopefully you'll be freshened up. Descend the stairs and head back out into the tiny alleyway. If you're really lucky, you'll have a canal at the end of it. Later, you can begin to make yourself at home. Alternatively, enjoy what Venice does best, five-star hotels set in former palaces. Break from the mainland, catch a boat to some of Venice's other populated islands, Murano, Burano, and Torcello. Murano is famous for its glass making, going back 100 years and known all around the world.
be going home, but feel lucky. You got to experience Venice whilst it's still here. Hopefully, you authentically sampled the culture too. You may be leaving, but Venice is the sort of place that will live in your heart forever. Thank you.